So in today's video, we're going to discuss about basements. Oh my God, one of the biggest subjects going out there. Now listen, I know not everybody has a basement. If you don't have a basement, watch the video anyway. It's kind of fun and entertaining. And then you can be the smartest guy on your block because most people in this world do not have a clue what to do with their basement because not all basements are the same. Should we go with this or this? That is the question. So today's video, guys, is all about basements. Basement technology, right? How to finish them. First of all, let me just start by saying half of you who are watching this video don't need to waste your time watching any more of it. <laughs> and that is because you own a house that is not designed to be a finished space, okay? Your house is old. You shouldn't be living in the basement. It's not healthy for you. And I say that as a disclaimer, kind of tongue in cheek, because there is a certain line that we drew in technology with building houses in North America where up until that point, you have no business finishing the basement, all right? Now, in 1970s, somehow, someway, somebody decided that if we start insulating our walls with that white styrofoam and get R1, that we can put in a tiki bar and a pool table and some shag carpet and we can live in the basement space. And ever since then, everybody has considered a basement as an alternative living space instead of building an addition on your home. And they were wrong to do it because those houses in the 1970s were not built for basement dwelling, all right? Now the building material industries were more than happy enough to supply you with all the wood paneling that you could buy and let you build in your basement. And everybody since then has come to realize that if the basement has been finished in 1970 or 1980 or even early 1990, everything that was installed in that basement is garbage the minute you bring it down the stairs for the following reasons. One, foundations weren't waterproof. Two, the concrete pad in the floor didn't even have a vapor barrier under it. Three, Nobody who was building basements back in those days understood the concept of moisture, relative humidity, effervescence, how to put in building materials that didn't disintegrate, how to redirect water events that are guaranteed to happen in your basement. It's all about water management in a basement. It's not about the finished look. So today we're going to talk water management. We're going to talk about which is the right basement subfloor for you. Do you even need a subfloor? Why the heck are you even building in your basement? All these subjects are coming right at you. Let's dive right into this. First of all, let me just give a clarification. First of all, let's just get some clarification. If you have a house with a basement and it is older than 1995, okay? You really wanna take two seconds and dig a little hole and find out if you have a vapor barrier underneath your concrete. Because if you don't, your house was never built with the idea of finishing the basement in the first place. One of the newest trends in home building now is they put in the rough-in plumbing for a finished bathroom. If you have rough-in plumbing for a bathroom in the basement, your basement was designed to be finished at some point down the road. And that means that the technology is in the subfloor and hopefully around the foundation walls to provide some protection for you against water. Now, Huh. I know there's gonna be a lot of information. It's gonna seem almost conflicting at times. So let's just get through it. First thing, let's talk about the floor. If you have a concrete floor and it has a vapor barrier underneath it, you're not transferring moisture from the ground continually, okay? That means when you build in that basement, it's not going to rot. It's not gonna go moldy. And at the same time, if your walls have got a waterproof membrane outside the concrete, and you'll see it because above the ground, you'll see that little black dimpled strip, okay? Usually they backfill with like little gravel or pebbles or river stone to make it look pretty. But if you don't have those two elements, a vapor barrier underneath your concrete and a, and a, a waterproofing system around your foundation walls, you are not controlling the relative humidity entering into that basement. You should not build in that room. Now, building science has been trying two different approaches to deal with basements for a long time. One, how do we build a home so that it's safe to build and finish a basement? Number two, how do we build or finish a basement in a home that doesn't have waterproofing technology? 
So let's deal with the old school first. If you have an old school home before 1995, if you don't have the rough-in for your plumbing of your basement bathroom, then you are what I'm gonna call class don't build one. <laughs> if you are intent on making that a living space, understand that you're taking on a lot of risk, okay? There are a lot of different ways that water can destroy your basement. Number one, um, you can have water for different water events come up through the concrete floor and flood your basement. Most basements don't have a sump pump, so they don't actually manage the level of the water underneath the floor. And I'm talking about um, seasonal things, heavy rains, uh, broken sewer system from an apartment building behind you, okay, that floods your house out. Yeah, that actually happened to me once. I couldn't believe it. My concrete actually heaved and split open and my basement filled full of water because a sewer pipe that wasn't on the map for the city wasn't getting maintained, backed up and broke and absolutely flooded my home. Never saw that one coming. The point is this, basements are built to provide structure for the house. They're not designed to be finished in anything before 1995. As a rule of thumb, you might find your district or your house is special and that's fine. The point is really want to just draw that line of distinction. Is it a good idea to build in the basement? When you build in a basement, you're going to have three things that you got to overcome. One, you got to deal with relative humidity, especially if it's old. Two, you got to deal with water events. So now you're dealing with what's the condition around the house? Do you have window wells? Are they, do they have drains to your weeping tile? Right? Do you have the ability for heavy rains or spring thaw events in the winter time to actually move water away from the windows? Because remember, insurance doesn't cover you against water that gets in and underneath the windowsill. Yeah, that's right. If your water comes in underneath your windowsill, you're not covered by insurance. And it can be absolutely catastrophic. The other thing you gotta deal with is, what's the return on investment? Now, if you're finishing a basement in an old house, your return on investment is nothing. Nobody cares, okay? It's, it's, it's your risk, you've done it on your own time, it's your money. If you're gonna enjoy it for a few years and that's what you wanna do, then go ahead. But for everybody else who wants to invest money, invest means you have to have an expected return and you can only do that if your basement's been waterproofed. So the products that I showed you at the beginning of the video are examples of different building materials that solve two different problems, okay? This is a subfloor panel. It was designed to be used by homeowners because it's convenient, it's lightweight, and it has two things. It has a dimpled membrane underneath, which allows air and water to move underneath the floor. Okay, so you put the subfloor down, and let's say you get a little bit of moisture coming in right at the wall where it meets the floor. It's a very common joint. And your weeping tile and your house is old and you got a heavy water event, or your grating around the house is moving towards the house and not away. It rains and water comes down the wall, finds its way through that crack because they pour the footing and then they pour the wall. So there's always room for water to make through that gap. That little bit of water can come in, it can travel around freely, work its way to the drain in the floor, and whatever's left has the ability to mix with the air and evaporate and dry out. That is a perfect explanation for why this product exists. This is designed for pre-1995. For houses that shouldn't have a finished basement, this will help you deal with the majority of your water issues, okay? Once you've got this installed, you can build all your walls on top of it. That's, a, that's one of the biggest questions we get actually, because I did a video, and I'm gonna link the card here, where I did my own dimpled membrane, and I put 5 8 tongue and groove subfloor on top, and I did it in a house that already had exterior walls, and we brought it up to the exterior wall best scenario is to put all the walls on top. The client in that case did not have a budget to take out all their walls and rebuild. Okay, so it wasn't done in the ideal scenario, but there is no building code for you have to put the walls on top. So they were left in a position where they were able to choose. The best scenario is always build your walls on top of your subfloor. Think of it like a dock, okay? And you want to put the dock on the water before you put the chairs on the dock. <laughs> You don't want to put your chair on the water. It's not going to hold up. Now, the contrary material is this. This material. And there's a lot of different companies and a lot of different options out there. Okay, this is just an option. This is an insulated panel. And it's insulated R3, which is R almost nothing. But because it's a passive insulation, 
in a basement where the ground temperature and the basement temperature generally should be different, it does a decent job of making a thermal break. It works pretty well in newer homes because you don't have to worry about vapor barrier and all that sort of thing. It's already built in, okay? Now, which one is best for you? They both run about the same price, about $2 a square foot. This one has no thermal break. This one has a thermal break. This one allows the water and the air to mix. So does this one, all right? If I had to choose between the traditional panel or the insulated panel, I'd take the insulated panel every day. Now, the biggest difference here is the height. This starts to get a little thick, okay? And one of the problems everybody in a house has to deal with is when they build a basement, they build stairs. Those stairs generally in older houses were the same rise and run on every step from the concrete. And building code demands that the height, the rise, is the same all the way along. So as soon as you put a subfloor panel like this, your stairs now have to be adjusted. You can't just add thickness to every step because your last step is going to be adjusted. So you're going to run into issues. Okay? So if you want to use a subfloor panel like this, I would suggest don't be advertising to the building code people to come and do an inspection. <laughs> They're going to cause you a lot of grief and make you put in a brand new set of stairs. Having said that, if you want to finish a basement in a newer house, generally speaking, the first step on a brand new home has a higher rise in anticipation of finishing the basement because it's a been created to be a finished space and they sell it to you as a currently unfinished space. I know that might come as a bit of surprise, so you have room to add a little bit of a subfloor. Now for everybody who's wondering, do I need a subfloor in my basement? No. No you don't. You can install your flooring right on the concrete. The potential for you to suffer a water damage problem is a lot greater because you don't have the ability for all those different kinds of water events to actually dry out. Okay? So you have hot water tanks in the basement that can burst. You have window wells that can be flooded over. You have groundwater that can come in from the wall at the floor. You have different kinds of stone or cinder block that aren't waterproofed on the outside and the moisture is just constantly pouring through. You have concrete floors that allow humidity to constantly be pulling through. So you have all of these different things aside from all the weird freaky events that can happen in nature that fill your basement, sewer backups and everything else. Subfloors will provide you a little bit more comfort. Okay, they're not going to protect you against everything. So the best investment for a basement is one that you can afford to lose. All right, make sure that you are thinking about your insurance package. I know it's kind of depressing to think about renovating a basement and thinking about insurance, but most cases a basement is going to have a water event that requires you to use your insurance. So think about this, all right? When you build your basement, try to build it with a subfloor system that isolates you from most of those water events so you don't need to use your insurance, all right? Makes sense? That way if you ever do need to use your insurance, it was one heck of a problem. <laughs> now, what I like to do I'm going to put the link to the card here. I like to make my own subfloor like this. Okay, I've got my own dimpled membrane. I use 5 8 plywood. Look how thin this is. This is not even half inch. They've actually made this product a lot thinner over time in order to keep the price down so that it can compete with its neighbor built by the same company with the insulation. So this is two bucks a square foot. This one's a little bit less. My system that was in the video that I just linked to is less than a buck a square foot and it is a better vapor seal and it is easier to install, it's actually fastened to the concrete and it's going to perform really well. Now, if you live in a house with little craters and you're going to run around on your floor all day long and you want an insulation barrier, then go ahead and get this. All right, it'll do the job. But install flooring that isn't going to break the bank. I've seen it in videos before, even some of the biggest Construction celebrities say that you can put this panel down and put down hardwood. Come on, let's use our head, all right? If you're gonna install hardwood in the basement, you don't wanna just stick it on this panel. You've gotta add at least another layer of plywood. This is too thin to hold a hardwood floor together, especially if you're not screwing this to the surface. Anyway, if you've learned anything in this video, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and if you're more confused than you were before, that's probably a good thing, because there is no such thing as one answer to the question, how do I finish my basement? 
I'm telling you right now, you've got to take in all the factors of the age of your home, the soil conditions around your home, the climate that you live in, what you're expecting your basement to do for you as far as pr production. Is it going to be casual environment or are you looking for a real finished space that you can entertain company or you're going to have someone living down there? There's a bazillion factors that go into how do I answer this question. And so if you're still confused and you need help, then consider becoming a member because then you can send me information on your home and I can help you out on the member's email, design a perfect system for your budget and your use, your climate and your conditions. The one thing that is for sure, if you're finishing a basement, you're gonna need flooring. So if you haven't seen it, click the link here and check out our flooring video. In that video, I'm gonna go through all the details of how to install all the different flooring, make the different transitions, the pros and the cons and the S's and the no's, the mistakes that people make and how to make it perfect for you. Cheers.